lived in China for almost a decade. You've been acclaimed as not only the best Italian sculpture in China, but the finest Italian sculptor alive. What is one word that would describe you? Well, I think my 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 work and my experience is like a global. So I've been traveling all over the world, and that is a very important, is a global work. Among all the awards and honors, publications and shows, Dionisio Cimarelli has a long list of global experiences under his belt and a very broad approach to execution. He has done work in marble, wood, bronze and ceramic, though he's mostly known for his figurative sculptures in Chinese porcelain. After being sent to China in 1986 by the Academy of Fine Arts in Kahara to study for his undergraduate thesis, Cimarelli returned in 2004 and lived in Shanghai for nine years, a time he spent not only learning how to work on porcelain or to speak Chinese, but getting involved in many projects and creating pieces that embodied both Chinese and Italian cultures. So you moved to China in, 2004. in 2004, but you went there the first time in 86 and you kept going Correct. back to Good. visit. You study well. Yeah. And um, what, I went there. Like, what made you go back so often and decide to No, I didn't go very there? often. I no? just uh, went to 86, 1986, uh -huh. and uh, I stayed there for four months. Mm -hmm. I stayed in Asia for a year and a half, traveling. Yeah. I, I studied for my thesis yeah. at the university, and uh, that's it. China was in 1986 at the time. And uh, 2004, they invited me there for a launch of the um, a book. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, Chinese, she wrote about me in this book in yeah. Beijing. So she invited me and uh, I was very excited, very interested to move back to China. And China, it was a, an explosion, a volcano. That, it must that have time. changed so much, you must have Ooh, witnessed such I couldn't a recall huge... an eye. 1986, 2004, it was another place, another world. Wow. Yeah. When I left, it was only bicycle around. <laughs> And uh, when I, I went back 2004, cars is like New York, like here. Yeah. It's so completely different. You I really, saw. you really immersed yourself into the culture. You learn Chinese. You, yes. you learn, uh, you yes. learn calligraphy. You yes. like really got into yes. it. What are some of the most valuable things that you would say you learned while you're there? I think the calligraphy. I think it is uh, the culture. I was very excited, very interested in culture. Yeah. Chinese culture and the people mm -hmm. at the same time. So I think it's. Uh, China and Italy, in a way, is much more similar. How so? It's much more similar than the, many people think. You know, we have so many things in common. In fact, before, in the century, in the past, so many Italians visit uh, China. Yeah. It's like Marco Polo, Matteo Ricci, Giuseppe Castiglioni, all these people, they made a really big change, a big uh, uh, exchange of culture between Ch China and Italy. So this uh, it was for me like a reference always, you know, a motivation, inspiration. Can you give some examples to me of like how the culture and how being in China actually specifically affected your art? So for example, if you see, you want to like uh, my drawing and watercolor in yeah. the beginning of the 80s, I mean, I had a very big uh, impact, big uh, influence by the Chinese uh, watercolor and ink. Uh, uh, drawings, so that's it was uh, one thing, and the other hand also the the, the, the sculpture, but partially, not that much, has mm -hmm. uh, changed later, like in the after 2004 when I was living there with my porcelain, etc. So it was a kind of slowly, you know, uh, merging, you know. A lot of critics say that you are a modern artistic version of Marco Polo, like you mentioned and that you really embodied both cultures. Do you think that that's something that happened organically or how do you think that you're able to do that besides besides through art? Well, it's um, all my career has been, I've been traveling a lot. Yeah. So they, 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 from the travel, I had always very big inspiration. But for sure, China, it was the most important inspiration, a big impact on my career. And um, so when I'm traveling, I'm trying to get, absorb all these things around me, you know, people, culture, uh, feelings. And I try to translate and put in my work, afterward. So it's a, sometimes it's a fast, 
process, sometimes a very slow process, but always I'm trying to digest all these things and put it back on to my work. What gets you most excited about Chinese art nowadays versus when you first went there? Like you're saying there are huge differences, China has changed so much. Absolutely. In terms of art and just inspiration, what would you say gets you most excited now? In 2004, 2000, I think all the, the, all the Chinese art changed and they had uh, big impact uh, with, with the Western culture. Yeah. So that's it was extremely interesting for me. It was, um, it was a kind of a, a big volcano. Uh, big inspiration, big exchange with the Chinese uh, um, artists. So, but in some way, I never, never wanted to become like a Chinese. And at the same time, I, I wanted to to make something different. Even I'm Italian, I didn't, I didn't want to continue to make my own art as an Italian. So I tried to combine the two things. Uh -huh. So my inspiration with the Chinese culture. So my things are not Chinese, are not Italian, are my work. And that's in some way what it was for me very important to merge all this culture. Can you tell me about the sculpture of Matteo Ricci that you made while you're in China? Matteo Ricci is from Marche region like me, yeah, in Italy. And uh, since the first trip I did to China, for me it was uh, a target, and it's a person which I got inspired. Uh -huh. And uh, so when the Italian pavilion, the Italian government asked me, yeah. suggest me to, to make this work for the Italian pavilion, Shanghai World Expo 2010, Expo, yeah. I was uh, so happy, I was honored about uh, this important uh, uh, work, uh, which I should do it for the, this important event. It was a Matteo Ricci anniversary. So I started to work, I had my own, uh, studio in downtown in Shanghai mm -hmm. and uh, so I tried to combine my feeling the, the, the personality of uh, Matteo Ricci which I think is a great person yeah. in the 1600 and um, obviously and put in a with a contemporary way but keeping still very classical mm -hmm. and by that time you had about, about 10 years of experience but sculpting in ceramic back in Italy. And then when you went to China, that piece was done in porcelain. How did that challenge your abilities as a sculptor? In a way, I thought porcelain it was uh, something similar, but I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started with porcelain because I wanted to find a material which represents easily Chinese culture. And uh, so I thought that porcelain, it was uh, the, the best material. So I moved to Jindajan, which is the heart uh, the, um, of the Chinese porcelain, mm -hmm. and opened my studio, and I started to create my own, my own sculpture. It was a much more challenging than what I ever expected. Why? I was thinking still with my ceramic uh, experience, but porcelain is a different. Uh -huh. So I didn't know it was that different. So I had a lot of problem to make it. It was a really huge challenge. But in the end, it's a fantastic material, and all the sculpture I've been using the traditional Chinese uh, technique. Before getting into Chinese porcelain, Cimarelli transitioned through quite a few different styles. He started his career sculpting abstract forms, inspired by surrealism. He then transitioned to realism after taking part in restorations and studying traditional techniques at the Louvre Museum in Paris. During that period, in 2001, Cimarelli created a marble sculpture of Saint John the Baptist, first show in Norway, and to this day his most challenging piece. A huge challenge for me, it was also my sculpture in uh, the Saint John the Baptist in marble, mm, Yeah. which uh, it, it was a sculpture I spent a year just for that work, nothing else. So I put all my experience together in this sculpture, and this it was a huge challenge. Huge challenge, uh, technically speaking, and uh, for living, and also working for just one year every day in one piece. So wow. you, you have to be really determined on finishing that work, 
So I did that because it was a challenge between me, the stone, and the sculpture. Were you pleased with the results? With how oh, it that's turned a, out yeah, the sure, process? absolutely. Yeah, sure. I mean, you're never happy completely 100% when you finish. Always yeah. you see something that you would like to improve, to change it. But that's part of my job, you know, it's oh. like your research, you always what you want to improve. So yeah. you're happy, I think is a fantastic work I did, I'm very happy about that, but you're never completely happy until the end, 100%. So if I would go back, I would change and make some difference, you know, especially after many years yeah. I did. So tell me a little bit about your involvement with architecture and I know that in China you you were, you were the art director right for a complex a luxury residential complex how did that come about because it's kind of odd to hear that a sculptor is getting you know involved in a project like that doing what you ended up doing right when they contacted me I was very surprised too because I did not expect and right away yeah. I told them I'm not an architect uh -huh. so this uh, this is just a contemporary big project of luxury villas. And uh, all the designers that were American architects, very well-known architects. And, uh, but they answer right away and they say that we don't need an architect, we need a person like you, because we need an artist, we need a sculptor, and we need a person which has uh, much experience in, uh, in, in, in the restoration. I've been working 10 years in the restoration, many important projects in Europe. So, in some of the villas, uh, they, we had also the stone, which I've been working in the Louvre Museum in Paris. Mm -hmm. So I was very, I became very interested, very curious, and I had a great relation, and I found it was a really great idea. So as soon as I saw the project, it was extremely high level, and there was also even the, the well-known architect, yeah. the former dean of the Harvard University, Max Kogan, it was part of the project. So I found it was a very such a high level, and I said, as always, I like challenge. I said, let's go. And I've been working for many years on this project, and it was a fantastic experience. What exactly did you do, though? What did you direct? What was the art director, you know, position it's, consisting of? All the design was already done yeah, by yeah. the American designer. So I was following and try to to supervising the quality of the material. So mm -hmm. they had very many things have been working like by hand, like a stone, a granite, wood, and marble. All this, they, most of the work they have been finished by hand. So I was working with the workers, with the engineering, and try to make all these details very well done, finish like an art piece. So I was all the time in the project and checking and even work and educating even the worker and explain how to make all this. How much do you would you say that your background, your roots, affect your work still? Because you've had so many international experiences and exposure. How much do you think that, that still influences you? I left Italy in 1989 and I started yeah. really going and work all over the world. But still my identity, my roots are very, very important. So my education and still I think I'm looking backward all the time, my culture. So I'm very open, I'm very curious, very interested in different culture, but still I keep my, my roots very strong. My, I'm looking still my culture as a reference. It's important because it's part of me, part of yeah. my DNA. But that doesn't mean I want to continue looking at my past and continue yeah. to remake the past. The, 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 the same things. So I want to, I'm looking forward and to combine all this emotion of the world. This now the world is open with the internet. We can travel easily and uh, and try to put all these things in one, you know, like the world making one. And that's my experience, that's me, my personality. How much does the physical space affect your work? Physical surroundings, oh, the physical a lot. place, that oh, everything. Oh, like, a lot. That... As I said, every time I'm traveling, um, what is surrounding me, the people, the energy, yeah. the atmosphere, the, 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 the architecture, mm -hmm. the nature, it uh, gives me big inspiration, change, and it had a big impact on my work. 
So that's why also my work every time is kind of changing because I try to, as I said, is like translating mm -hmm. this emotion into my sculpture. Chimarelli decided to relocate from Shanghai to California in 2013 after getting invited to be the creative director for an international art studio over there. One of the very few things he'd never done by that time. An opportunity to teach at the Art Students League of New York brought him here last year, but once again his mind is set on having new experiences, doing bigger and better things. In 2013 you moved to the US and you got actually a green card for extraordinary ability, the artist visa, a green card as people call it. So how did that how did that happen? First of all, what brought you here to begin with? And how did it affect you? How much did it change for you? Well, I always have been very interested in having some working experience in the yeah. US, but for some reason it never happened there and I was busy in many different other projects. And uh, 2013, I had uh, this chance, this uh, invitation, mm -hmm. this large studio in California as uh, creative director. And I thought it was a fantastic opportunity. And after so many years in China, I thought it was interesting also for changing yeah, something big different, change. big change. And um, so I took right away this chance mm -hmm. and I left Shanghai <laughs> with a big pain in my heart so after nine years and I moved to California which it was a, had a very very big impact and fortunately I had this uh, chance after just a few months I had mm -hmm. this uh, green card of extraordinary ability so I had a great honor of yeah. the institution of the US and I was very happy and this gave me the chance to work and to do uh, what I really want to to do and I stayed in California for a year and a half what kind of work did you do there as a creative director? Creative director, I was uh, working in this large studio with a, yeah. about 70 people working there. And we made a sculpture for all over the world. Oh, wow. And I was directing all this all studio, the, the quality control, and creating with my team so many different sculptures for exhibition in Hong Kong and Singapore, Taiwan. Wow. And we had uh, several different studios. In, uh, in the US, uh, Las Vegas, and uh, London. So it was a very interesting experience for me and I could uh, challenge also my skill and my ability to work with so many different wow. people. So how did the transition to New York happen? That's a very exciting because uh, I love New York. I came yeah. here so many times and I had uh, this uh, chance to teach in this uh, historical school in Manhattan, the Art Student League, mm -hmm. where I'm teaching now. And it's a fantastic New York. I love New York. New York is a place where it fits my personality. Yeah. And in some way, remind me a little bit of Shanghai too. Mm -hmm. Even though they are pretty different city, but they have something common too. So, and I got so many uh, emotion here. Many things going on. It's a fast city, and that's what yeah. I like. How has it affected you creatively so far? Creatively, now it's kind of, you know, it's, you have to organize. It takes time to, to to get in the system first, so with my job in the school and with a few other uh, small exhibition uh, which I'm doing now here in uh, New York. So it's kind of um, on the time now which I'm digesting all this emotion. And I need it's a slow process. I'm, yeah. I need first to digest and after put it back. So I hope soon I will see the results about my. Uh, beginning in New York with my first words. And when did you start teaching? You, you started teaching when you moved to New York or did you ever teach classes before? Giving lecture yeah. and teaching in India uh -huh. and many different countries, Philippines. Wow. And this now I had a chance I'm working regularly mm -hmm. and every week I have a class yeah. with different students, people and students from all over the world and uh, very exciting. What and do you learn? Oh, always you learn, you know, when you're teaching, always you, you learn so much from the students. What are some things that you've learned so far well, that are like, you know, like major things? Because in New York, it's a different, different city, isn't it? Absolutely, because at first, I mean, it's, uh, New York is uh, a city with a very competitive. I mean, yeah. you have a sculpture and artists from all over the world. And in my class is uh, 
you know, people, they, they ask you questions, they put a doubt on what you think is already uh, clear for you. And that's, I think, is uh, what I like. Uh, I like when the people, they tell you something about something which you thought it was very clear for you, and finally you see that it's not that clear. And that's very interesting for me because I love the doubt. Mm -hmm. Because doubt you, makes you thinking. And when you're thinking, you try to find a solution. And, um, and that's, I think, is a, the most important thing which a student they teach you. Get a question, everything, huh? Absolutely. All the time they have a question. That's fantastic. When you are teaching classes, what do you... Is there one thing that you try to teach that it's like the most important thing a struggling artist needs to learn, you know, off the bat? I'm teaching marble carving yeah. and wood carving. So one thing I'm trying to teach them first is a skill. Mm -hmm. Because to, yeah. to control the material, you need a skill. That's very important. Because if you don't have a skill, you can't control the material, especially the marble, which is a very difficult material. But at the same time, the skill has to be together with the creativity mm -hmm. and plus the beauty which is part of uh, so it's a beautiful shade even it could be abstract it doesn't have to be only only figurative mm -hmm. uh, I have a student they work in a very classical way very figurative or some other very conceptual and more and more abstract so but still I'm trying to give them an education and I study so with I to find something which is beautiful what is a beautiful but sometimes there's also a doubt I got a doubt from them which is uh, can be different the aesthetic from you and your student which it doesn't it's not belongs to your uh, culture is coming from a different education so you yeah, have a different point of view and that's also very interesting so we have a long discussion about that to put together my idea his idea and this, I think, is a very important, very interesting. You've done so much. You've lectured throughout the world. You've sculpted in every type of material. You've been the creative director and art director for architectural projects. What's one thing that you're still aiming and hoping to do? When you don't know the future, it's very difficult exactly where you want to go. So I'm searching. Sometimes it's more clear. Sometimes it's kind of not very clear. So because every time you, you search, it's like when you start a sculpture, you have an idea, but you never have a completely clear idea because you're searching and changing. So I'm still now I'm searching and making some given my experience a big impact in this great city which is a very important so I want to use my experience and put together with this uh, my experience here in the city so also the school is a very important and try to make some new projects big large project and I think probably that's the US is the right place